Hi, Tim Qualls. I'm all the way down in Marydale, which is right on the border of Maryland, Delaware, and uh, we're in Marydale, Delaware. I want to get that right because there's also a Marydale, Maryland, I understand. This is Al here with me. How are you? I'm fine. Yeah, and th th let's talk about where we're at today and what's going on. This is uh, the Bluegrass Festa, you know. It's Eastern Shore Bluegrass Association. We're a nonprofit organization that's been around for uh, since the late 70s, early 80s. And it's really started to uh, to, promote, to promote bluegrass. In the old days, it was hard to find live bluegrass to go see. Not like now. You can have, even have cable stations with the music, you know. And uh, so everybody that was interested joined and everything for a while. We had festivals and everything. And now we just have a show once a month at the firehouse here at Marydale. It's the second Sunday of every month. It starts at 1 o'clock. Yeah, but what, what I'm amazed with because I love this stuff. I mean, and it's hard to you say like you say you can find it on TV and stuff like that. But to actually experience bluegrass music live, this this takes you back into some real deep roots of America right here. But these guys, I, I'm just hearing them play, just sends chills on my back because you don't find music like this anymore. No, I mean everything is even country music now is like rock and roll. You know, '60s rock. I agree with you. It's all the same thing: drums and bass guitar. Where this is all acoustic instruments. And, it, and it, now the genre is now, because there is no real country music like there used to be, a lot of guys are picking up classic country music and playing it and mixing it up with the bluegrass. So you hear some slow tunes that you might have heard on the 50s or 60s on the radio, you know? Yeah, so. I, I love the sound of it and everything. And once again, it's, it's, it's building that and keeping that spirit of America going as, as far as that, that music, because otherwise that's a dying music. You know, there's not a lot of people that's into it, but once you come and sit and really can see what this is all about, I mean, it's good music. Oh, yeah, it's good music. And a lot of songs tell a story. And most of the time you can understand what the person's singing about. You can actually hear the words and understand what the words are. <laughs> but I, I, I love good country music. My, my, my dad being out of the state of Kentucky, I've also had the opportunity to enjoy good, good bluegrass. And, you know, I guess the last bluegrass I, got, I can think about that really claimed it was Ricky Skaggs way back when. And, 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 that's, and that's, you know, I get to think about that 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Well, you got to understand that what bluegrass really is. It's really a combination of uh, Appalachian fiddle songs and the people that came from the mountains and the blues. And they, people were influenced by the blues. And uh, Monroe, who was influenced by the blues, Bill Monroe invented the stuff, really. He, if you listen to him play, he did these, these rhythmic things that were really blues things. You know, and they mixed up the two, and they came up with this re really unique sound. Yeah, so, so, but th th that's that's the love you can feel. You can, you know, yeah. you can see that in you and everything else. Because this association, let's talk about that a little bit. Right, it's so a lot of people here. If you want to take up an instrument, give you pointers, give you tips. And it's and I, what I see is a, you're drawing a pretty good crowd that comes in for this. And then what I see is I was talking to one gentleman outside a minute ago, came all the way down from Pennsylvania. He's a player, and you get so you get players from all over the uh, all over the area. Because where else can they go? Marydale, right? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, and they have different. You know, people have favorite bands they follow around, and they all grab their guitars. A lot of people play who are listeners, you know, or fans. Everybody, eventually, everybody sort of tries to play. I want to remind everybody, this is 110, that's where you're going to find it, 110 Firehouse Lane, and that's in Marydale, Delaware, so program that into your GPS, that's one nice thing, you know, in the old days, he looked it up on a map, he said, I'm glad you got the GPS, because there's about 20 different ways to get there. And the ladies, they have a fire department, ladies have a snack bar, ladies auxiliary, and they have hot dogs, hamburgers, coffee, pie, cake, that kind of stuff, you know, it's really for a nice, nice afternoon. Now, how's somebody get involved with the Eastern Shore Bluegrass Association? You come, you come on time, and, and if you want to join, you know, like that. And they don't have, we don't have meetings. The only meetings we have, just everybody shows up, and then the board of directors sometimes has meetings, take care of the business end, you know. But uh, you just come and show up, and you know. Yeah, I, I, was, I was, I was, I was, I was amazed because I watched somebody join, and the, the cost factor there is not <laughs> ten dollars. Yeah, right. I said to myself, wait a minute, ten dollars to join an organization, that, and and that's membership, I guess, for the year. Yes, yeah, for the year. And we are a nonprofit, but it's like, uh, so we're not getting rich, you know what I mean? Let's put it that way. You're not making a living off of this? No, 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 no. <laughs> but you guys do a fantastic job. But I'm telling you, if you want to enjoy some really good old-fashioned bluegrass music, it's happening right here, and it's happening once a month. This is every other... No, it's every, it's the second uh, Sunday of the month, every month. Every month, second Sunday. You don't want to miss it. Get started at 1 o'clock, and you guys go up to, I guess, about 5? Yeah. yeah. So, Al, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Lead us to my end, Mary, so 
Well, we're enjoying the bluegrass sales and everything else, but there's a lot of people working back here in the kitchen to make this thing happen as far as supplying food and everything. And I want to get this right. I'm going to start over here. And your name is? Phyllis Fonville. Now, Phyllis, let's talk about this is the Marydale Volunteer Fire Department? That's correct. And you are the uh, ladies' auxiliary? That's correct. And what do you do in here? Serve. Cook food and serve <laughs> for our community and... Yeah, because what, what I'm talking about, and this young lady here, and you are? Diana Jones. Diana, you guys got to love this. You get back here in the kitchen, you got all these people and the music going. Yes, we try to uh, provide, you know, whatever they need. And usually they ask us for, you know, special stuff that we try to accommodate. Yeah. Yeah, and when you go over here, because I'm going to try to talk to each one of these, and you are? Pam Hyde. And Pam, when it, when it comes to the ladies' auxiliary, this is the important part, because this is important, because this is money that's going back to the fire department. Correct, and it's also a community service. Uh, Bluegrass enjoys coming to our fire company. They enjoy our food. Well, and then I, I'm looking, most of you got the bluegrass shirts, so are you a bluegrass fan as well then? Becoming one. Yeah, becoming one. <laughs> it's kind of irritating music. You get used to it after a while. <laughs> yeah, well, when you're from New Jersey originally. Oh, that, no, see, see, that, well, see, I got a little bit of Texas blend with some Kentucky, so that fits right. You know, I, I have no problem with this at all. But it's, uh, you know, it's, it's an adapting. Now, this young lady over here, she's a, uh, uh, you're, you're not a bluegrass fan now. Oh, yeah, I am. I am. Are, are, you, are you really? You enjoy it? I've been watching bluegrass coming up here with my grandfather when I was a little kid, so I, I love bluegrass. So you're going to carry the gen the thing on? You're going to get up there and on the stage? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> That's not going to happen. Now I see you. You got the, are you part of the fire department? Fire department, yeah. yeah. So it's all a volunteer, correct? Mm -hmm. I'm a volunteer firefighter. My dad's the chief. My dad, um, and my brother's a lieutenant, so I've been in it for a while. Well, it's got to be fun, too, you know, because all the training and everything, it's not fun when you have to go out on a real, real deal. We're going to find out more about this, uh, the fire, because I'm going to try to do something with the fire department. But I want to talk about the ladies' auxiliary, because you guys work hard to ra help raise money so they can buy the equipment they need and everything else. So that's, that's what this is all about, correct? Correct. We work together as a group. We are... Of course, the fire side and the auxiliary side, but we are one group. Yeah, and when now, because when, when you talk about this, all volunteer. Yes, it's all volunteer. Yes. Yeah, and it's nice. It's nice when you know these guys, and you don't need them. It's like insurance; you don't need them until you need them. So, because yeah, it's a full-time deal. Because one of the things you got going on is uh, once a month, and, and my brother-in-law now he's on the camera over there, and you can tell by the size of his belly, he likes to he likes to eat a lot of food, and he likes not paying a lot of money for it. He noticed on there once a month, you guys do a, you know, all-you-can-eat buffet kind of deal, seven dollars. I mean. Uh, uh, yes, all you can eat breakfast for seven dollars. Yes, every third uh, Sunday of the month. You see his belly. Uh, he he will drive from Wilmington, Delaware, down here to eat that set for seven dollars. It's, it's all you can eat. Ladies, want to thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Now, where's where's your dad at today? Home. So he don't like the bluegrass then? <laughs> no, he's just, we've been working all morning with the breakfast, so he's, he's at home relaxing. Yeah, so he is the chief then, and your and your brother is the? Lieutenant. What are you? 
I'm just a firefighter. <laughs> That's all that like. All right. Well, this is the Ladies Auxiliary, so you always support your, your local fire departments, but definitely support your Ladies Auxiliary because that's who helps supply the money and helps the fire department function the way they need to function. We're going to go back and list some more bluegrass, then we're come back and we're going to talk about the fire department itself here in just a minute. Stay with us. I'll never come to a volunteer fire department without trying to find a chief to talk to the chief because I think these are the greatest people on the planet Earth because it's, like I said, a volunteer fire department, and that means guys stepping up and doing their part for the community, and that's what this is all about. This is Marydale Fire Department. Let's talk about Marydale Fire Department, first of all. Been around for a while. Uh, Marydale Fire has been around since uh, 1941. Um, we have uh, territory in uh, two states and three counties. That's a, that's a lot. Of, I didn't realize until you started popping up, because when we drove up here, I said, well, there's another fire department. When you started popping up doors, you guys are loaded up. I mean, you can handle just about any situation there is. Well, yeah, we have um, you know, three engines, a tanker, a you know, rescue truck, a brush truck, two ambulances, and a boat. Yeah, now, Chief, I want to get your name, first of all, because I didn't do that. Your name is? Buffy Madden. And when you talk about you, you, you got into it. Now, you said your uncle was into it, but you have lured your entire... <laughs> is there anybody in the family that's not doing anything with the fire department? All my, my family, other than my mom and dad, are in here. My, my wife is the secretary and Nan was captain. My son's a lieutenant now. My daughter's coming through the ranks. She's, she's a firefighter. We all, they both come in as junior members like I did from um, 14 years of age. I, I started in... Uh, I met my wife from another fire company, next door neighbor, Hartley, actually. So, so that was a good way to wait women, now, I guess. I, I, I never thought about that. But when you're talking about a volunteer fire department, it takes a lot of people, and and and, and you know, they've got a, a lot of training, a lot of things like that that's got to take place. I mean, uh, how many how many full time? We have about 45 active members. We have 75 people that are on our books. Um, you know, we, of course, we have functions and the meetings and the trainings and the, you know, like today, we, we had breakfast here today. The members here at 6 o'clock this morning cooking breakfast for these people and uh, we fundraisers and uh, Cause it, well, that's what I was going to say, because it takes money to put the, you know, and it's the communities that step up to it. And I've been telling people for years, always give to your local fire departments. Go right down there to the local fire department. I mean, you guys, that's a nice thing when you got a lot of people out there soliciting for money and stuff like that. Best way to give is just come right directly to you guys and give it right to you, because that's uh, it, that way you know it goes right to the, the volunteer part of it. And one of the ways to participate is what what's happening today. I mean, the girls are in there, auxiliary fire girls and guys. I, I forgot to mention the guys. 
issue. I didn't realize on a girls' auxiliary they have guys. The girls don't want me to mention that because they have to lift the heavy pots and pans and everything. But they're out there, and that's where it, a way to give, just ra- help raise money. Now, it used to be that the girls was on the ladies' auxiliary, and the guys was the fire service. Now it's we have guys in the ladies' auxiliary, and we have girls that fight fire. And they get upset when we call them firemen. They're really firefighters. And, I mean, them girls, I tell you what, there's some girls out there today that I'd go in and burn a building with. Yeah, well, I, I was going to say your daughter looks like she's a, she's all gung-ho. She, she she seems to love what she does. I mean, I got a chance to speak with her today. She's over there helping the ladies, I mean, and, and, and doing some of the cooking and stuff. But she's an actual firefighter, and she she loves it. Oh, yeah, she it, it, like, it's bred into them, you know. They've been around as far as they're firehouse brats since they've been – well, old enough. I guess you were 14 when they when you started. I, I guess they, they were pretty much raised here. Let's talk about being raised here because you know you came in and I I met a young lady in here uh, in here for the bluegrass, but more for the fire department. Her husband was chief when you came. Uh, I guess you served under him and kind of memorial hanging in this fire station for him now. Well, um, you talk about Ali. Well, I know, I know it's tough. I hit you at that chief uh, there because it's, uh, you know, just so you'll know, I lost my wife here in March uh, last year. So I, I know the feeling when you lose, lose somebody that close. But a guy was the chief for, I, I understand, like 15 years. Yeah, he was chief, um, I think, 13 years. Um, but he was the godfather of this fire service. I've, I've married at least. And uh, the things that he'd done for this community in the fire service in Delaware, well, he's one of the f- first ones to enact the, uh, the Delaware Chief's Law. I don't, I don't. I don't want to interrupt you there uh, for a second. Uh, just, just because we say you know, he helped enact the chief's law, a very important law in the state of Delaware. I understand. It is a very important law for in the state of Delaware. I wish the surrounding states would have it. Um, the chief's law, Title 16, it lets us, uh, lets the chiefs have the authority to control the whole situation, where we actually have more power than the, than the governor, and to ask for things that we need to control a fire or control. You know, emergency that we're well, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here and while you're saying that, I'm thinking to myself, well, what's the governor know about fighting fires? They better let the guy that knows what and, and experience. Because 14, I don't want to tell how old you are now, but from 14 years old, you've got to be one of the most experienced guys, probably been on most situations that you're ever going to see with a fire. Well, I've been chief for 19 years, and uh, I don't know everything, and there's a lot of other people out there who know a lot more than I do. And I learn every time I got on a fire. And I learn every time that I go to a different training, I still learn. And uh, I take something from the old chiefs and uh, my surrounding chiefs around me. The, the surrounding chiefs around me like my brothers. We talk all the time. And I learn different things from them all the time. And I hope they learn different things from me. Well, you know, you guys, you're, you guys are out there and you run into different situations. I was happened to, uh, in, in the military with, involved with a fire. And unless you're really involved and see it, and, and you don't know how quick things move. And you guys got to be there and make it. And you got to make that call right there because you're, the, you're responsible for all those guys, not only trying to protect me as this, uh, as, in, in my home, but you got to protect those guys and doing their job. Oh, that's, that's correct. You, you never know what situation you're going to run up on. Every, every alarm is, is different. There's none of them that is, is ever the same. You know, there's none of them is ever textbook. Or something's always going to go wrong or some different problem that you're going to have to solve. And, uh, you know, you, you just do the best that you can do and hope you make the best judgment and to bring all your people home safe and protect the property that you're going out there to protect and the lives that you're going out there to protect. Because that's the most important thing is the people's lives. There's no doubt in my mind you guys laid on the line. That's why I said, you know, especially, you know, when you're talking about volunteer fire department, it's up to you to keep these things, these doors open, and, and, and keep the volunteers. If you're a young man out there, and if you got uh, somebody, I always say if, if you're active in things, it keeps you out of trouble. I guess being 14 years old, your uncle bringing you in, it kept you out of trouble. That's, well, in, in a small town, we had no other place to go. And uh, we either have the ballparks or the firehouse. We didn't have these little convenient or any other little shopping malls and stuff. We didn't have that back then. And uh, the place it did keep you out of trouble, but we couldn't do the things we did we do now if it wasn't for the members that we have. I may be I may be chief for 19 years, but just because the members that I have below me that are so good, including the ladies auxiliary, you know, they're the those are the backbones of the fire service. And they, they, they don't get recognized enough as long as what the men don't. And I say the men, it's, uh, this is the men's side, that's the lady's side. Yeah, but it, it's the firemen or firefighters now 
So, I mean, because we have girls in here to fight fire, too. So Yeah, I, I hate to bring up the old chief and everything, but I did meet his wife. And, and, and the reason uh, it's, a, it's a sad situation because, you know, he was chief for all those years and everything else. And, and we're still participating, I'm sure, long after he stepped down from chief. Uh, but he was uh, passed away here last year in September 2nd, I believe it was. And you guys really honored him nice by saying as long as Marydale Fire Department is standing, his, his uniform or his, his jacket will f fly in your, your house. As, as long as I'm chief, his gear locker always stand in his firehouse. Al Lane was inspiration to me, and I know he was inspiration to a bunch of other guys in this whole town. And um, like I said, he was our godfather. Believe it or not, I mean, he he bred and lived and bred the fire service every day of his life. And at the same time, try to make a living, you know, because you got to, you know, when you're doing a volunteer, you're out there doing other jobs as well, and all of a sudden the siren goes off, and you guys say, oh, oh. <laughs> Well, he was, uh, Al was actually uh, one of the first dispatchers for the Kent County 911 system. Um, when they come in with the Chief's Law and part of his, you know, 1975 range like that, they started at Kent Center and he was one of the first dispatchers. And he worked there about 20 some years and retired, but then he taught fire school and he was Chief here. He was always in. You know, the man was involved. <laughs> the man was always had to do something to do with the fire service, and I, you could probably go to Puerto Rico and, and and find somebody that knew Al Lane because they would come to the Delaware State Fire School and, and teach, and he was an instructor out there. And wherever you go, everybody says, "Oh, you're where Al Lane was." Yep, yeah. I'm where we were Al Lane. Yeah, you got to be very <laughs> proud of the fact that you had the opportunity to know the man, and, and I know that your uh, greatness has come from you. I've talked to some people there. You're very well respected you're in your own right, Chief, for the job that you do and uh, and the work that you put in. And we we thank you. You know, I'm not in this community, but uh, from the other communities out, and for all the citizens out there that have to rely on volunteer fire departments, I thank you wholeheartedly. Well, I thank you, and I. I, I Thank you for your time, and I enjoyed talking to you. Thank you so much. Ooh, it's a nice afternoon outside. Nice here at school. I WWBA. I heard them cowbells ring. <laughs> Let's go to the key of G, fellas. Well, it makes more than where I'm wandering. No matter what I say to do. Let me love you. The plans we made up. 
Bye, Jonah.